When we start reading the Bible, all 66 books, it can be daunting. And there are lots of questions. Where do I start? What's the point? How long will it take me? Do I have to read the whole thing? When you start reading the Bible, there are a thousand reasons to stop. And Satan loves every one of them. But there are three milestones that I'll give you that will give you some structure to help you focus until you can read through all of God's Word. What's up, party people? I'm Brad Large, and this is Reclaim Reformation, where we're striving to understand God's Word so that God can reform us, our families, and our churches a little more each day. Understanding God's Word is so important for transforming our lives, but many people find it difficult to make Bible reading and study a habit. So I broke it down into three goals that every single person who reads the entire Bible will have to do anyway, so that they have a little more focus and motivation when they first get started. The goals are read the stories, read the wisdom, finish the Bible at your own pace. That's it. Simple. In fact, there's no way to read the entire Bible if you don't do those things anyway. I'm going to be honest and just say that there are parts of the Bible that are like coffee or beer or bourbon. They're an acquired taste, like the historical sections and the prophets. But as we look at the Bible, it's all important. It is God's Word. So we should never forget the point, which is loving God and loving others. And the Bible helps us do that by transforming our mind and understanding God's definition of love. If we want to read the Bible in a way that transforms us, we have to absorb it and make it a habit. The easiest way to do that is to do it in community, to keep it fun, to be encouraged by your progress, and to stick with it. And that's much easier to do if you have goals, which is where this video comes in. So here we go. Goal number one, read the stories. This is so foundational and important. I mean, there's no reason for new believers or readers of the Bible to go rushing off to read Leviticus. Trust me, it isn't all it's cracked up to be. Just think about how we teach kids. They learn the stories over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with starting anywhere you want to in the Bible, obviously, but the stories teach us more than we think. Things like the character of God or how to ask good questions. And often they inspire us with a sense of awe and curiosity. All in all, that's not a bad deal. Also, it's just easy and fun to stay motivated as you read the stories of the Bible. You could even do this a couple times through just to get to know the stories better. The Gospels and the stories of Jesus' life and ministry, Genesis and the foundation for the rest of the Bible, God's promises to Adam, Noah, Abraham, King David, the wars and judges and the Exodus. So here's the short list of the books that are Gospels and story-based. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You have Acts and the stories of the early church. Genesis, Exodus, Joshua, Judges, and Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, Esther, Daniel, and Jonah. Don't worry if you didn't catch them all. They're all listed out in the free Bible reading tracker that I have in the description, along with all the other books of the Bible. So goal number two, read through the wisdom literature. And the second goal is also focused on getting through a subsection that's a little bit easier to read, except for Job. Job can be a pretty, uh, pretty long book for such a short story, but... There is a lot of good stuff in there. The wisdom literature in the Bible is full of practical stuff, and it gives us an intro to some of the major themes in the Bible as well. It helps shape our worldview, and they're just good standalone texts that most people find pretty interesting. James is a New Testament book that's often considered the wisdom book of the New Testament. It's not quite like the other New Testament writings, and it gives a lot of practical advice on how to live in light of Jesus' resurrection. So I threw that in there as well, even though it isn't traditionally listed as a witter, uh, wisdom literature book. The books are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, and James. Goal number three is to read the entire thing. And I'm not going to lie to you, this is daunting the first couple times you get through it. Um, the prophets are pretty repetitive, and it's hard to understand what they're so mad about half the time. But learning the history books and knowing about the exile helps a lot with understanding the prophets. The Israelites were exiled multiple times, and most prophets speak specifically about things happening in Israel's history. So when reading the Bible, this isn't 100% necessary to understand completely, but when you start studying the prophetic texts, it really helps put things into context to know a little bit about those different periods of biblical history. But don't get bogged down. It's okay to get a little confused or not get it right, you know, not get it all right away. Um, the histories can be a lot, so keep reading through them. And lastly, the New Testament letters are in here as well. And these are pretty cool. Most are written by Paul, but they talk a lot about what it means that Jesus came and died and was resurrected. And there's good insight into how we should live, how to test false prophets, how to be good members of a church, and even how to shepherd and grow our, our families spiritually. So all in all, you'll have 46 books left. 
Again, you can download a free tracker with the link in the description that'll help you keep track of all the different books and chapters that you've read through. And remember this, at this point, there's not really a rush. I think people being really motivated to read through the Bible is awesome, but some people take longer and that's okay. If you find yourself getting stuck, it's okay to go back and reread some of the stories or interesting parts like Genesis or Exodus, or break things up by rereading the Psalms and Proverbs. It's more important to make it a habit than to do it all in order anyway. In fact, I specifically set up my tracker so that if you miss a few days, weeks, or you even want to take some time off, you can choose to do that and start right over uh, or pick up where you left off. And here's a pro tip. When you get to this part, uh, read the shorter books first. When you get to reading the rest of the Bible, Obadiah, Haggai, Habakkuk, Philemon, they're all one to three chapters long, so they're super easy to knock out, and they're great books to study because you could read them every day for a week without breaking a sweat and you can really learn what they say. Since they're so short, it also helps you focus on how they fit into the bigger themes of the Bible. Here are some resources that change the game for how I read and understand the Bible. And the first one is The Unfolding Mystery. This is an Edmund Clowney book. It's an insanely cool little book that helps you understand and see Jesus in every part of the Bible. It points out how to interpret the Bible for yourself. It's got phenomenal questions at the end of each chapter to help you start thinking more biblically. And then the other one is the Knowing the Bible series. This is awesome too. This is a Crossway Bible study series and they're super uh, lightweight, but they go pretty in depth. They have great questions that help you think deeply about the material. And they're only six to 10 bucks a book, which will really help you um, get some good Bible studying in and also teach you how to teach other people the Bible if you want to do that at some point. Um, there are so many good notes in each one of those. Uh, and then lastly, a good Bible study or a study Bible. If you only have a reading Bible, then a study Bible is one of the best investments you can make. Or you can use ESV.org. Uh, it's a Bible online, which has a free study resources in it. Yeah, it's really amazing. It's got language, Greek and Hebrew language uh, resources. It's got study Bible notes. It's got links in it. It's super easy to use. So I highly recommend that. And it's completely free. And the last thing I'll leave you with is join a Bible study at your church. And here's a tip on finding one that meets when you are available to go. One of the biggest issues I see is that if your church doesn't have a Bible study that's available when you can go, that you, you kind of just give up. But there might be churches studying the Bible in your area that are faithful. If you don't feel comfortable enough to host a Bible study at your own church, then you can join one at a church close by. If you don't have a local church that you regularly attend, then get one, no excuses. But I think a lot of people can't find a Bible study at their church and then give up. And that seems kind of silly to me. Two things that I think the church could do a little bit better job at are collaboration and discipleship. So starting a Bible study at your church or finding a faithful church nearby uh, maybe not a Methodist or Lutheran church, but one that your pastor recommends or is the same denomination that meets at a time that you can go. Uh, there you go. Two birds, one stone. And don't forget to get your free downloadable Bible tracker from the link in the description. And please subscribe. And I'll catch you soon. Peace.